but he said it's shown that suicide rates have climbed for men in their late 30s and 40s because as they get older they remove themselves from their hobbies that get you excited and I think when I was a kid men in the neighborhood were always working on cars doing stuff in the garage other guys hanging out less distractions back then you know my dad came home from work nobody was calling him on the landline and uh, he said they just remove themselves from social circles sure. right so sure. you guys talked about hunting you go hunting alone or with a friend what do you guys uh, both hand and now yeah, i take yeah, my kids both. there you go this year i'm gonna take so, my wife some of the best memories i have in the last couple of years are just hunting trips like obviously the hunt's cool but it's really all the bs and you do around the fire yes, in the exactly. tree stand or the funny stuff that happens well, also i'll say this you've been traveling a lot do you know going visiting friends I could always tell you're invigorated when you get back from those trips. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm invigorated right now. I think yeah. it's super important to be around like-minded individuals who are passionate and excited, and it just gets you thinking outside of your box. Yes. It's you important know? just to have like ping-ponging ideas. Like all of a sudden you said that scale of one to 10, I'm like, I love that. Probably. I, yeah, yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. He said one, I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Talking about ghrelin, I'm, I'm here, dude. Yeah. I'm like, I'm all about it. Yes. Like, you know what that is? That's ghrelin. Did you, you know? <laughs> Grill. All right, we're gonna warm it up. So light sleds. I usually do one pulling sled, one pushing sled. If you're on the sore neck sled, you just go forwards there and take it back backwards. Okay. You gotta stay a little bit, yeah, you, so you hold on to that the whole time. And you gotta stay low because it's humid and sticky. And if you go backwards, you just gotta watch your back with, we got some stuff out. You could hit any of those sleds, Amp. You could grab weight from behind you if you want. Like this feels much heavier than normal, this sled. The humidity. Let it be known I'm going he heavier than Meathead Professor already. <laughs> All right, watch your back, fellas. So backwards sled, then forwards. I think it's important to get those angles strong all around. So this feels a little bit heavier. Normally I'm pulling with the heels. But this humidity, whoo, got us working. Sled, carry, calisthenics, cannot go wrong. So I'm gonna do, take off my watch. I'm gonna do a, yep. Or I have some uh, lighter, thick grip dumbbells that are like 40 pounds. So grab this one, Joey. Anthony could grab that one. Or if you want to do a rack walk, up to you guys. I'm going to hit a rack walk. Kettlebells are great for rack walk. Anthony's going overhead. I'm usually a little bit tight overhead, so I don't go overhead until I'm warmed up. My lats are pretty tight. The jeans are optional, but if you really want to feel I'm like a dad, you know, throw the Giant jeans on. People always ask about the jeans. Here's the thing, all right? I'm always really doing still. stuff, so it's like I can go train, then I can go work on something in jeans, and at the end of the day, I feel like I look cool, and if I feel like I look cool, that's all that matters across what anybody else thinks, well, so. The Barbarian Brothers trained in jeans and work boots and flannels. That's right. You would have been able to train with them because you guys are strong AF. You just got to get the new balances, man. And oh, they, don't worry. I, I have some Reebok classics that come out from time to time. time. They didn't yeah. train five sets. They did, we're doing this exercise for 30 minutes. We're doing it for an hour. So now we'll go some sort of lunge variation, forward, reverse, lateral. You might be a little bit too tight in the beginning. I'll probably do reverse just yeah. to grease the grooves a little bit. Right. So I will do one set, one direction. Second round, I'm changing. How many reps? 10. You want to go up, hit 20. I do a lot of calisthenics though. Just a good litmus test of what's feeling good, what's yes. not feeling good. Spend a little bit extra time right. in the areas that you're feeling a little weird in. I actually front load my workout with all the supplemental stuff. So last week before I squatted, I did every sled. After every sled, I did a carry and I did body weight. So I did five rounds nice. before I even touched that was the first time lunges felt good for me in a minute because I, I broke a toe in jujitsu. Uh, so I've been doing I've been doing a lot of Bulgarians just because yeah. the foot stays yeah. planted. I don't have to pivot off right. of that toe. It's yeah. I think a key for men and really everybody, athletes, strength coaches, you must learn to work around injuries, 
bumps and bruises, or you will never train if you can't do it. I will it. say that's the one nice thing about bodybuilding is there's always a way to there's work so it. There's yeah. so many options. Yeah. It, it does get tough when you've, you're a power lifter and you've injured your low back and you can't deadlift. Like you can still work around it in terms of strength and rehab. Yeah. But as far as bodybuilding and just lifestyle, there's always a way to work around it. And sometimes that injury is a sign of, hey, you need to chill out on this, segue into something else for a month. Most important thing yeah. is it keeps that word mental health gets thrown around a lot, but if I don't train, I'm actually kind of a dick to be around. So training is something I need to do for my emotions. If people get hurt if they're, they're watching this. The book, um, The Gift of Injury, yes. I think is pivotal. Great book. Fantastic. Every single time I've been injured, I have come back stronger and better. I did, it sucked. Yep. Okay, take, take a day and mope around and then wash your face, quit being a baby and get to work on the things that you can improve. Yeah. You're assessing, you know? why did I get hurt? I, 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 back I was known for my overhead press and strongman and do you yeah. know what precipitated that? Was me being an idiot and I took a safety squat bar, I had 605 on it, I went for a PR, I hit it for a double yep. and I think oh, I'm gonna hit this for a triple and I come down and I go like this, didn't have the safety bars, pins in and yep. I go, and I start to dump it this way. The, so the handle comes under here and rips my shoulder around. Yeah. So I separate my AC joint and I couldn't press uh, for like six months. So what I did was um, I did uh, incline log press because I could press this way. Yeah. I just couldn't press this way. And then because I couldn't back squat and I was kind of rightfully scared of the safety bar, I front squatted. And I did it for like six months. The first day back underneath the bar, I had yeah. developed so much power and stability. I was like, boom, I, I had PR'd by like if, 20 pounds. If you respond to the injury properly, you, eat, you come back better. Oh, yeah. You come back better. All right, so now we're gonna hit a rowing exercise. We could go down, somebody could do recline row. One thing I've been working on as I just signed up for a Spartan race. So I'll do a recline rope climb, which is good for the grip, good for the biceps. I get low, pull up, set of three. So this is a little more lat bicep shoulder work. If somebody wants to hit recline row, go for it. This is the last one, get low, boom. Okay, I like just getting a pump. I mean, if you don't, something's kind of wrong That's with right. you. Yeah, you're broken. Recline row. Joey's body stays rigid. It's like an upside down push up. Chin is a little bit up, getting a good stretch. So we have scapula movement. And it's already, get, I got a good pump. I'm feeling like, hey, I'm in a good mood. It's time to work. Yeah, time to Primed work. and ready to rock. Okay, should we hit another round or should we slowly build up into the bench? What do you feel? I'm good for whatever. I'm good for whatever, but. Okay. It'll probably be more of a pump day for me, nothing crazy. Just bulbous tissue growth plate to the uh, trap bar so we're ready to go and then we'll add a plate to the uh, to the bench clamps I think we're advanced we could this I'll this I'll clamp up these sleeves are a little slippery yeah these sleeves could be a little slippery so clamp that up Joey I'll say this, um, we're gonna do more of a pump day. You should have a high rep day. It's great for building muscle. It's also good, I, I talk a lot about the mindset. Sometimes you just need high reps so you're not getting psyched and like in a battle against lifting heavy. Yeah. And the psych, if you wear out your emotions, aroused, yeah. yeah, too aroused, you start kind of um, like saying, I don't know if I wanna train. Well, what if it's just a, full out pump day, like Matt Wenning, he'll do 100 reps of light dumbbell or light barbell bench before the heavy work. And I love that, I think it gives you longevity. So we're gonna bench, we got the Intec Swiss bar, we will do trap bar bent over row, Intec trap bar, and then we're doing um, rotational throwing. So this could be a strength or power movement, depending if you wanna go fast or muscle building. We want to build the back. I think Anthony said earlier, like the back shows, the back is a sign of strength. You can never have too big a back. No doubt. <laughs> I believe if I see you got chest and arms, but you have no back, no legs, I know you're not an athlete. You're not a powerful person. And then we want to do some throwing for power 
and some spinal health. Move the spine so you don't get hurt turning around, doing little things. You know, somebody's behind you, you're at the movies, he's talking smack. You want to be able to rotate back, slap his teeth out of his mouth. Two of the biggest things that I regret not doing more of, being out of a team aspect, rotational work and sprinting. Yes. Those are those two things that like they have digressed so much and I'm feeling it in all these weird areas and I swear it's because the lack of rotational work and the lack of being able to still sprint. Yeah. There's a statistic uh, I just saw a couple days ago that 75% of people will never sprint again after age 30. Yeah. I think you, I saw you, yeah. I've been doing hill sprints. Yeah. Um, they're not crazy steep hills, but I've been hitting them, they feel great. I'm going to Georgia this weekend for my daughter's tennis. There is a nasty hill next to it. And sometimes um, in my mind, I'm like, I'm just gonna beat my inner bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna destroy my inner bitch. And I've been feeling, so I did hill sprints next to West Virginia University. Did the hill sprints at the park nearby. Uh, Joey's absolutely correct. You must hill sprint. All right, let's get some reps here. Reps everywhere. We got clamps on the bar. And then we'll throw. Where do you want us to go, Joe? Should we? Wherever you guys want, wherever you want to do. We'll wait online. Love to have training partners where you're just working together. I love this Intex Swiss bar, guys. Neutral grip is what I'm using for our athletes probably 70% of the time, 75% of the time. And same thing with my own training. I rarely use a straight bar. Somebody once said to me uh, in my Gladiator Strong program, he said, man, I don't know what I'm getting strong at because every three weeks you're changing it. I said, yes, we're not training specific for powerlifting. I'm training you to be strong all around. And so uh, when I benched like a month ago, I was with some of the guys, I hit 265 for an easy single. I hadn't used the straight bar in two years. Why? Strong all around. I don't want you to just be strong on your favorite bar or your favorite exercise. If you guys are dads, right, and you're trying to figure out your programming, you can either do like a heavier week, alternate with a lighter week, or maybe it's a heavy, medium, light, and just keep yes. rotating that around, change the bars. That way you're not so always so fixed in the same intensity each week, uh, and it mixes it up a good bit. Also, also get these sore necks jammer arms to help you sit up from the bench. Those are clutch. Yeah, dude, I yeah, like, I just did right that. Here. I was like, this is great. <laughs> It's like the handicap uh, right. toilet built in. <laughs> Got handrails everywhere. There you go. Let's get it. Father Zach. Yeah. yeah, buddy. A lot of reps. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. We're going to move over to the trap bar bent over row. All right. Do we face out on these? You want your butt facing to the open. So, so here to here? Yep. I've never used one of these before, so this is exciting. Ooh, yeah. Feels good, right? Very smooth. You could even do barbell complexes with this, so five deadlifts, five bent over row, five shrugs. You could do a squat high pull combo. But uh, for the Anybody who's like, man, my back feels beat wow. up. I like that a lot. It's less strenuous on your back, but you also have to understand um, if it's less strenuous on your back, say, hey, maybe I gotta get my lower back stronger. Yeah, what yeah. I like is the angle of the handles. Typically with a normal trap bar, they're fixed. These ones have a slightly angle backwards, so you can get a nice bar path. This is their older original model. Their newer one has higher handles, but it does have the angle. And who makes this again? Intec. Intec makes this? By the way, that's the difference in, I think, equipment that's being built by lifters versus equipment that's just being built by a company that's maybe yeah, engineers. Yes. Okay, so check the grip, flat back. I'll start with a deadlift, and then I'll get my body set. Here we go. Oh yeah, I like how far you can pull the elbows back. Good stretch. Hell yeah. Good. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm gonna hit a couple extra shrugs. Okay, okay, big guy. Settle down. Settle down. I need, my daughter is at the age where I need to intimidate any young man that wants to date her. <laughs> that's right. I'm sorry. That is, uh, I told my son too, that's his job as well. Protect. That's right. All right, so Joey's gonna hit some throws. 
I'm gonna go rotation, but when I'm against the wall, I have overhead, chest pass, rotate. I'm gonna rotate today, I haven't done it for a bit. I haven't done it for a while, so I'm gonna try it. Feel big big misconception too with these, I find a lot of the athletes I work with, these should be light, yes. and they should be fast and snappy. If this, all right, listen, I'm 270 some pounds using a 12 pound ball, okay? Maybe, yeah, 10 to 12 pounds max I would do with these. So the I see too who, many guys, like a 30 pound correct. freaking wall ball. The guy who invented Dynamax, I spoke to him, it may have been 03. He said, Zach, you wanna know what weight I use for the NFL guys? Four pounds. He said, I only created the 20 when CrossFit started doing wall ball. And then he said, I hate that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Good rotation. Hips. Good. Very good. Couple cues there is I tell athletes I while, arms length away so you don't clip your hand on the wall. Yeah, so it's awkward at first. And I also tell uh, the kids do more reps on your non dominant side, especially if you're a baseball player. So if you're always rotating one way, yep, I like to start on this side, my non dominant side. Rotate, launch. There you go. Good. Anthony is not lacking in the back department whatsoever. <laughs> so, very, very saying this again, start on your non-dominant side and do a couple extra. So if you're supposed to do eight each side, give me 12 on your non-dominant side. Do you, uh, do you like that as a protocol for anything, even uh, hypertrophy? Like, so for example, this leg yeah. is larger than this leg. What I've right. noticed is this leg is stronger than that leg. So I think there's some sort of compensation you're where my body is like, We've been trained to do everything with our dominant side, even brushing my teeth. I start brushing my teeth with my non-dominant hand. And it's, uh. yeah. <laughs> you gotta quote unquote Spartan up yeah. that mind-body connection. I have, you know, atrophy in the right leg because I've had four knee surgeries on this knee. Uh, my right arm is bigger than the left arm. Yeah, so I'll do little, I'll walk by a barbell in my house and I'll do six one-arm barbell curls, just sneaking Sneaking a little extra, beating the weakness out of my body. Maybe a couple extra. He's gonna be showing us up every single time. Oh yeah, I mean, he's, he is, he is. I'm trying to beat these guys any way I can. All right, so now let's go. Now let's pick up our own pace. We'll go two rounds. So whatever weight you guys want to add, a quarter? What do you want? I'll probably put a 25 on just to yeah, rep it out. Are we adding weight on the trap bar? Yeah, we can put, let's put some weight on there. I'd put a 25 on there, yeah. Yep. So go boom, rotate through, and feel free to switch the medicine ball throw variation each set. What, uh, what reps are you doing? If, let's say we're doing three sets, Joe. Would you go 10, 8, 6? What would you do? Uh, probably a good mixture, yeah. Probably do like 12 to 15 the first one. Nice. Then anywhere like 10 to 12 second one. Then like a good 6 to 8 last set. Perfect. You know, we're kind of stimulating a good amount of hypertrophy. Kind of working close to some strength reps. If this was, say, this was this week, maybe next week, I flip it up and we're going that one to five. You know what I mean? So we get a little taste of everything. Nothing and then, wrong uh, with linear progression. Yeah. You know, people kind of downplay it like it's bad, but you could build up to a 500 pound deadlift with linear progression. You know, you could bench over three plates, work, working and utilizing linear periodization. Good control. Every rep looks the same. You know, I'd say for adult men, even athletes, I try to minimize grinding. Yeah, right. I don't want to say we never grind, but I need to know that you're technically, you're a, you're a technique expert. 
if I'm going to allow you to grind. I think a, a sign of an elite lifter is like they'll do a rep and everyone goes, oh, my goodness, you had so much more. And you know in your head, no, nah, that was it. Right. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, you know, but yeah. it was such good technique and the speed moved. Agreed. That last rep. <clears throat> Although I once hit a 585 front squat and it haunts me to this day that I didn't hit six. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I don't know that it's in the cards yeah. to ever go back. It's there. funny how we play that movie in our mind. We remember. Okay, so Anthony's on the mid grip, slightly closer. I do both grips, but when it gets heavy, you know, I might choose one over the other. But when I'm building up, I'll mix up the grips. This bar's great. Any guys who have shoulder issues or, you know, pec issues, you can change the grip angle up a little bit. I think that's a lot of, like, I remember, it's funny now, growing up, I would see in the corner of gyms, this squat bar with pads on it. Yep. I was like, oh, it's for pussies. That's right. no, no one used it. And then as I started getting into strength training, I realized just how important an SSB bar was or how important multi-grip bars are because it still allows you to train you know, with the restrictions you have or aches and pains rather than not. So be open to these different types of bars and utilize them in different ways so you can train around your injuries. When I, was a, when I was a pro strongman, I trained almost exclusively squats with the SSB and a cambered bar, simply because I pressed overhead so much. It yeah. saved my shoulders either out here. But then also when you're doing an SSB bar, your back is, you just can't get tight yeah. and it's gonna pull you forward. And in strongman, almost everything is front loaded. Yeah, front loaded. Your stones are out here, your farmer's carries come out here, the log press is out, everything's out here. Imperfect. So. Imperfect training. <clears throat> and for the younger athletes watching, you're using these tools to give you longevity. So when you're in your mid to late 20s, you're not hurting because you've rotated the impact on your joints. Right. So I like this stuff for longevity. Yeah, the, the non-sexy movements allow you to play the game longer. Yes, sir. I love that bar. I gotta get one now. Yeah, that's a pretty sick bar. I feel like my gym in Lancaster actually has one of these. I've never messed with it, so now I have to start messing with it. They don't, uh, this is the older one. The new one is right there with the higher handles. Big back. Come on. Come on. The back tells the truth. Like, the back don't lie, baby. That is so true. Who's strong? I'm just gonna look at, do your traps stretch through the shirt? Traps, shirt. back, and ass. You can tell, tell a strong man or an athlete right away. There you go. Come on. Easy way for this dog. Ain't no old dog in here, baby. Come on. Yeah, you need to train to stay young. It's such a, such a mindset. Woo. All right, Joe, here we go. Good. And let the feet naturally move. Second set looks better than the first set. It shows. And I'm going to try and uh, start with the non-dominant yeah. side. Like it shows how the body starts getting more coordinated. There you go. Rotate. Yep. Nice. Wind it up so you get that rotation. There it is. And use your hips when you throw. Bang. Good. Yeah. The cue I tell athletes is pretend you're trying to throw it through the wall. And that tends to help them get a little more aggressive on the throw. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. One thing too, a lot of people ask, right, we're short on time. How do we control our rest periods? A couple of factors. One of the most easy ones that I like is just breathing, right? Once your, your breath rate drops to a point, you can have a nice, easy, casual conversation. Usually for me, that's when it's time to go. If our heart rate's too elevated, where it's messing up us trying to produce reps, um, or 
we're just not recovered enough to get similar amount of reps that we did before, probably need a little bit extra rest. But easy way, another one, clock, right? So we went through this, maybe we put two minutes, whatever on the clock, then we get right to it. Keeps us structured on time and on pace to finish that workout in time. Uh, and also we're out of breath a little bit. So we're building our cardiovascular system. So we're getting the gains from all these main movements, heart rates elevated, just overall good systemic uh, response for somebody who just wants to be well-rounded. Yes. The t if your technique is faltering, take a little longer rest. We're talking about like the- Dad's being busy. Sometimes once a week I'll do circuit training. So I'll do five exercises and I'll build the warm up into it. Yeah. Go two plates, so I'll do first round light, second round medium, three working sets, I'm done. So the warm up was part of the workout. A lot of my workouts these days, um, I'll hit a light warm up and then I'll hit one like feeder set and two heavy sets and done. Yeah. For, a, for like an upper day, yeah. Like, I think the only less is more. When you're experienced. You're I was gonna say, when, yeah, when, you're, when you have a newer athlete, you know, the four the sets of 12, the volume is the, they don't know how to push themselves right. to the breaking point, but when yeah. form um, and load and execution is on point, you don't need, right. like less is more. You need the volume, that's why Marty Gallagher would talk about, Kirk Karwaski would do one all out set and be done, but Kirk is a world champion. Yeah. When you're working with somebody new, they're needing the volume. See, a lot of guys are buying it. The, the um, old school Mike Metzer I stuff is coming. It, yeah. And I'm like, that can work. But also, also, he truly knew how to take himself to the breaking point. A yeah, lot of these he guys, was an advanced expert. he was an advanced expert. And like, you watch that guy do hack squats. It looks like he's going to puke on that last rep. Yeah. And these guys are like, oh, I trained to failure. I'm like, man, you had five more Did reps. You know? yeah. Well, I read a book. I forget the author, but it was about weightlifting. And it was definitely like a European weightlifter. Uh, but he goes through the progressions of beginner, intermediate, advanced. And in the beginner, you see how much stuff they're doing, right? Lots of emphasis, especially on the technique of things. But the advanced athlete really just did clean and jerks and snatches periodically because they mastered the technique so much and they could cut out a lot of the other crap that they didn't need. But I kind of was kind of reinforced with that with Dave Tate, where Dave Tate would only squat bench your dead a couple times, maybe like, you know, maybe he'll deadlift once a week, yep. right? But beginner intermediates can deadlift two to three times per week. But yeah. it just shows you like that evolution and that training career, kind of to your point of like, yeah, you can really- I did a podcast it. on, I did it today on Mike Menser's hit method. I did it when I was young. And I said, well, I know what my problem was. I'm doing 65 pound behind the neck press. Right. What? <laughs> and then I have somebody doing three forced reps, three negatives with me. I was way too weak. Right. I shouldn't have been doing hit until, you know, Mike Menser squatting, five plates. Right. You, you want a light lift off here, Joe, or no? Yeah. Good? Man strength. When you're uh, training alone, you know, choose a weight that you can control during the setup. Okay. And also, if you're training alone, don't use collars. Here is fine, but if you're training alone and uh, that you get pinned underneath, well, one, you chose a weight that's way too heavy. Uh, but two, then you can't spill the weight if necessary. Yep. Ne Never miss reps. That's right. You know, I tell athletes if they're like, what do you, do you think I should do this? I go, if you're questioning it, Don't. it's already out. Because when you get to this advanced level of strength, you've already played the movie in your head. You know how many reps you're getting. You're not missing. Right. Uh, I see a lot of athletes missing reps, which is a great way to get injured and actually get weak. You don't get strong when you're constantly missing reps. One thing with the high schoolers too, if they were testing, for example, and they, they hit a, a PR, maybe it's five, 10 pounds. Yep. I say, stay there. You know, there's no need to make the bigger jump and possibly fail because now in your head, you left on a bad note, right? Yeah, yes. The only time you take a gamble is on the competition floor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Serious. As an athlete, yeah. hey, I know you might be able to do more, but let's save it. We got to practice. Tomorrow? Yeah, yeah listen, I, yeah. that's, a, that's, I kind of hinted at it in the podcast, but that's the biggest thing I would go back and change. I maxed effort lifted so many times. It's like, remember what Lee Haney said? Oh. Lee Haney said it in the late eighties, early nineties, stimulate, don't annihilate. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to switch my grip out on the last set. I'm going to go with the wider grip. Okay. Feel curve good. Ball, curve ball. Yeah. Let's yep. Go. Let's go. Boom. Nice. Super smooth. Super smooth. Come on. There you go. 
I did five, probably could have done. <laughs> That's right, isn't there that stat of uh, how much your bench, what is it, bench two, t if you bench 225, I think, or whatever your, your body weight is for a certain amount of reps. I think, I think one in only 65,000 men will squat 405. One in 65,000. Like, a little off tangent, but jujitsu, right? Everybody's like, I, I personally believe if you're an equal skill set with somebody else, but you are stronger, who will win? Stronger guy. Yeah. However, with jujitsu, guys like us with a background in strongman, like our, de if you have over a 500 pound deadlift and over, let's say a 405 squat, whatever overhead press, like you're pretty damn strong in that world. The skill, by the way, the ability to apply skill yeah. is strength. Right. Learning skill is coordination. So, sure. uh, but sometimes athletes fall in love with lifting so much, they disregard sport. And that's when I say you became strong and useless. Yeah. You've gotten a big yeah. deadlift or big clean, but when we're, you're in football yeah. practice or right. scrimmages, you're always gassed. Yeah. That's why I loved strongman because it kind of scratched both itches strongman. because uh, yeah, who doesn't want to chase those big numbers? But strongman is strength applied to skill. Yes. Look how Joe has a little body English, which is an advanced method. He knows how to do just enough to help him maybe be powerful on the way up, control the eccentric. Yeah, with that, it's, it's, I'm always looking for full range of motion. Yeah. I'm at the point where if I use body English, it's consistent and not all over the place. Too often we see an inexperienced lifter, their body English changes in severity rep to rep. So, you know, some of the uh, science-based gurus will say that's not the most optimal. However, they also said partials weren't good and that changed fairly recently, so. Yes, length and partials. <laughs> then we mentioned the Europeans. You know, now thanks to YouTube, we come across some old videos of Europeans and Russians in training and they're doing overload squats in the top half. Uh, Charlie Francis had Ben Johnson oh, doing Chris, yeah. high box squats. The, the bottom line is this, is that if you want to be a coach, you need to train in the weight room. You need to train on the field. Like Joey said, he wishes he did more uh, sprints and jumps. And you need to, for the most part, experience the sport so you could really blend the science and the art as one. I always remind the athletes, we're here to train to become elite athletes, not elite lifters. So at some point you gotta pick which one you wanna be and make that the priority. But if it's sport, don't get caught up in the lifting. It makes you. Woo. Let's do on this last med ball throw, a uh, quick uh, med ball complex. We'll drop the reps a little bit. Let's do like three overhead, three chest pass, three rotation to each side. So get a little conditioning going. This is a tricky one for men. Usually you don't have a cement, you know, garage or cement walls. Now go chest pass. And then rotate. Good, wind up, rotate, good. Very good. Nice. Love med ball. Gets, gets your heart rate pumping. Great for athletes. So Anthony's doing the feet together overhead throw. That's more dynamic trunk. You could also do a step and throw. Nice. Good. There's a uh, park not far from here. And so where I filmed for my SSPC cert, it's like a uh, racket wall or could play tennis against it alone. My daughter used to play there when she was a kid, just hitting against the wall. I had our guys doing like rotational throw, side shuffle, right. movement. So we need strength. We need jumping, sprinting. We need movement. And then the athlete must train the sports skill. And then the athlete must also increase their sport IQ. They gotta watch film, yes. So you need to become a master of everything. You know, you have to master the sport.
so I'll do, Anthony did feet together, I'll do a step and throw. So a little bit more power. Then I could do a step chest pass, or I could get close and hit, hit more rapid. Rotate, catch. Oh, hells yeah. And then I blast the cameraman. <laughs> if you would have accidentally let go of that, oh man. It's getting sweaty. Yeah. <laughs> oh damn. All right, should we move on? Yeah, should I change it up. One, one thing I do want to say real quick is uh, with cardio, right? A lot of people with cardio dread cardio. But what we just did is technically some cardio integrated, but it was fun, right? We're as fun as it can be. We're throwing things against a brick wall. Uh, you can get more dynamic with it, with different movement patterns. It almost trick your brain into thinking it's something else than mundane cardio. So if you're someone out there, you can get creative with different methods of how to get your heart rate up and find what you like. Like recently, I'll admit, my wife and I have been playing a lot of pickleball, you know? And, and I, I'm out there having a blast. I'm watching my heart rate, get my steps in, uh, which to me is a lot better than getting on a treadmill or going and hitting a run. Not to say, if you, if you like that stuff, cool, but get creative with it and utilize it to benefit you, I agree. both physically and mentally. Yeah. Man, I, uh, I need to challenge my wife to pickleball now. <laughs> well, I'll do this. What's that, a 25, Joe, or a, that one goes here. We'll put, yep, I try to take everything from one rack. You're right though about the uh, pickleball and just creative stuff um, to, stay sh to stay fit and to stay in shape. I, I know my daughter, she plays tennis. Do what you like. With my lifestyle clients, um, Got it. I'll often ask them like, hey, on, on each of the various days that we have, what's a movement that you love? Yes. I'll put things in there they hate. Okay. But if they know, hey, I'm going into the gym and I really love this thing, it might not be the thing I'm choosing, but if it keeps them mentally engaged. You're, me you're meeting them in the middle. That's right. It's, and so even when I train, I'll do something I suck at. I'll do something that I like. It maybe feels good. And you even have to do that with, with teenagers. Joe was talking about when we did the podcast. You got to give them a little bit of that bodybuilding. So maybe at the end of a training session, I'll say the last seven minutes, your freedom. You could do arms, abs, you could do more work from the workout, and they feel like they have autonomy, they own it, and there's something empowering to them about it. The generation today doesn't respond well to the 80s style of coaching, of do this, shut up, do this, get that, you know. So they want, go, oh, it's totally not allowed. A lot of these coaches that want to coach hard are, you know, stepping down, not in high school and college. I remember that. There is a place for hard coaching, but uh, you have to blend it with how did it, what gets them to stick with it for a life. I had some brutal soccer coaches, man. It's like, you don't get water till we're done. I'm like, coach, it's 90 degrees out. Like, why, I wonder why we're not performing that great, because we have no electrolytes. Zero understanding of nutrition whatsoever. You know what I tell new athletes? Don't ask me when to get a drink. You need a drink? Go get a drink. You probably, every 15 minutes, need about a cup of water. That'll keep you going. You were mentioning earlier about the cramps. Yeah. So the cramp could be lack of nutrition slash hydration. Sure. Yep, the day before. And then the other reality is, if you're not training explosively, yeah. let's say, for example, I trained our girls' soccer team yesterday. We did eight squats, goblet squats, followed by four jumps, contrast method. I saw girls who haven't showed up all year like, ah, I'm, yep. cr I'm cramping. Y you're cramping because you haven't been here. Yeah. Your muscles are not used to that. Oh, I'm just stretching. The reality is if I'm giving a heart-to-heart -to, -heart to an athlete, you have not done the proper preparation. Yeah. So the message to athletes out there is get a coach who's gonna train you for performance. If you're training on your own as a teenager, you're only doing what you want versus what you need. And that's what we, anecdotally, we had three or four uh, groin and hip strains throughout the entire season for lacrosse. I would say three or four of those kids never were in the weight room no until the season. 
So, and it's like, hey, you yeah, know what? Uh, yeah, could, could tell you what's coming because you just went from zero to 100 without any prep, yeah. all the wheels fall off. Success is not an accident, and nine out of 10 injuries are not, yeah. and we just, we kind of saw it, so right. preparation. So, all right, let's, let's take uh, the next part, Joe. We have carries, yep. and are we gonna do triceps with it, or are we just gonna do a couple carries, and then? Well, let's do, if you want, we would do the, yeah, we'll do uh, a, a carry, a tricep, and like a single arm row yeah. or something. We'll just go through a couple rounds of that, and then we'll finish with a little meathead bro sesh yeah. buys and tries. Right. I'm excited to use this bar. So what, what the heck is this thing? Okay, so I'll go over the, let's grab a quarter to load it up. I'll go over technique. It's a T-grip bar. You guys Google T-grip. Uh, can't remember what the website is, but uh, Timmy T-grip made these. Timmy's from Strong Island, Long Island. You could do presses of all types, overhead press, benching, floor press, a lot of curling, a lot of arm work from it. And I love it. I'll even use it for our adult men, push-ups in the squat rack. So I'll set up here, somebody's gonna hand it to me. So when we, we could curl it for many positions, but from triceps, I'm gonna sit the bar against my forearms. Oh, kind of and rest on your forearms. Yeah, right it's gonna yeah. give a real unique, uh, it hits the triceps in a very different way. So, I'm trying to drip my juices in your face. Yeah, that sounds right. good. I got great story. So here we, I have this position. You could grab other position. You could, I don't really tell people to go thumbless, but if you're, if you're an expert like I am, you can. <laughs> so we could go to the forehead and up, or we could kind of do, um, yeah. what would this be, JM? That'd be like a JM press, yeah. yeah. You can also hear like the Rice Krispies in my elbows. <laughs> it's cracking, yep. but it doesn't hurt, so we're good. But this, man, I like how you have the leverage of the forearm. Oh, it, trying to like alleviate a little bit of pressure on the, on the wrist. wrist. Yeah. I love this bar. That's nice. So people could and you know, so let's just get up here, yeah. no leg drive. But I like to do reps on triceps, you know. Yep. I'll go down to eight, but usually when I'm coaching athletes, you want to grab out. this yep. this one in. I'll tell athletes, you got it, you grab it anywhere. I'll tell them more like 15 to 20 rep range. I've just found athletes. Their elbows are not strong. And so I don't push the heavy weight on yeah. extensions. I get them to do more reps. All right, we'll hand it to Joey. All right, so, so Joe, you can do, yeah. Got it. Got it, right there, yep. Want me to move your hat? That's uh, right, I'm gonna go Nice. <clears throat> so you could also do. Super comfortable. We're gonna curl with this later, and we'll have like four or five different grips. So, love this bar. Wow, that's nice. It hits, it's hard to say, man, but it hits that tri. Louis Simmons always spoke about triceps right down by the elbow. This is a great bar. Yeah, I like it because usually when I use an easy curl bar, I can feel the tension a lot more in my elbow. Yeah. That's why I typically use dumbbells so my yes. shoulders can rotate a little better. I will use dumbbells. I'll use this. I'll use a uh, band bell rhino flex bar. But again, we're trying. I wonder, can you do, can you do like French presses with those seated? This, yeah. If you if you have good lat mobility, you certainly can. How are you going to grab? Same way. Same way. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to pick it up from like the hammer position. Uh, so hold, hold, let's go. There we go. Yeah. Got it. Oh, I got it. There we go. So oh. when you're handing off to somebody, young athletes, you you don't want to just hand it. Wait for your training partner to say, "I got it." I love this. Yes. It's awesome, right? I would. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely feel like I want to pick up the uh, Intec trap bar and I'll get one of these things. Oh, yeah. That's what's cool, yeah, about getting out, checking out different gyms. You, you find stuff you don't have, you've never seen before. You know, you can it's find ways to your, just train for forever using different things. It's good for your joints. Hey, you can take that. You got to I'm going to grab it. I got it. Yep. So look, here, this would sit on my forearms if I was uh, But bottom line is what I'm looking at as an almost 50-year-old is, I want to do this shit till forever. Right. So if I am married to the straight bar, period, end of story, it's going to destroy the body. And so now when I train young athletes, I think to myself, am I just getting away with this movement today? But right. It's going to hurt them five years from now. Right. Would I do this for my own son or daughter? If the answer is no, then I'm not. Change doing it up. It. That's right. So conjugate exercise selection. 
So now what are we gonna go, Joey? So we got tricep. We do uh, like a, either a carry or a single arm row with some of these cool ass globes we got over here. We got the globes which have slightly bent handles which makes the grip more challenging. Yeah. This globe is not that heavy, but it's a, yeah, so it tests your grip more, which sometimes that's what you need. You need to get- Yeah, I mean, I've been obsessed with grip training the last couple months for yeah. sure. Is your buddy Juji has the, does he He's got do? all sorts of grip stuff. Yes, yeah. I love grip training. I also think that as we get older, and if I don't train my yeah. hands. I need to start doing more of it, to be honest. Well, one of the indicators for longevity, but even like the rice bucket, I have, I always use a rice bucket, at least three days a week, just five, 10 minutes, working my hands in rice. Well, we did, I did a little video tour of your garage gym. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great. I need to start doing more. So on the other side, we have, if you want to row, let's go around the other side, we could, pull the weights onto the rubber floor. That one that has the thick with the knurling is about 110. You see it by your left foot, the thick one. Yep, that's a great dumbbell to row. This is the 150, which I haven't used for a while. I'm gonna so dust it off. 80. 80s feel good. Are we rowing first or carrying? Uh, let's do a row and then carry. Or it could be anything. Let's, we'll go, we're gonna let Joe lead this. He's, he's the youngest dad. So Joe's doing a support one. Yep. which a lot of guys do this wrong, but he's a little bit stepped away. His back is flat and he's in a bit of a squat position. I see a lot of people kind of ripping the dumbbell and like meeting it halfway down they're, or their back. Just, I call it starting the lawnmower is what I'll see. Yeah, starting the lawnmower or again, something you've seen with the optimal guys is like the arm path is wrong yeah. and they'll do something like this where they're like, you need to, and you see oh, guys yeah. swinging it. Yeah. And like they're trying to, and I'm like, man, guys. Yeah, I'm always right in the middle. I'm always like, I, I don't want to lawn mower it, but I don't want to like arc it too far. Right. I just kind of want my wrist to almost go to my holster. Is what I say. No, I say the same thing, but I'm feeling like, especially for hypertrophy, I love that deep stretch at the bottom. That's what, yeah, that's why I'll keep my feet away. Yeah, so you can get a deeper stretch. Dumbbell, a little stretch at the bottom. This is perfect. Dumbbell near the floor, arm at about a 30 to 40 degree angle, the right arm, the support arm and back stays flat. And the truth is some people may not be strong enough for this. So you got to do chest support row, back extensions, build them up to it. Yeah, I do a lot of supported stuff for my athletes who are peaking, um, like, yes. like bodybuilders and stuff. Yeah. The calories are coming down, things like I that. Agree. But in the off season, we're when doing- your calories are coming down, your, <laughs> your strength is- and I, and I will drop out all intensifiers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I remember I competed in bodybuilding Dude I, remember, dude, I remember your picture, bro. You were shredded to the gills. I was pretty shredded up, but I think it was about like three weeks out. I, let's say I was normally benching 245, 265. I remember I was like benching 185 and it felt like a ton of bricks. And I was going through the carb, carb cycle, carb depletion. Yep. One of my girls is in depletion starting today for her show yep. coming up. It's very rough. So Anthony keeps a little less of an arch than Joe but his back stays flat and he's locked into the technique. I think the key here is arm at an angle, back stays flat, big stretch. So I'll get an angle, I'll stagger my stance a little bit. Nice. I like to row. So I'll mix up my rows in the same workout. Yeah. I'll go here, then I'll do a kettlebell, then I'll do a thick grip. You know, for me, what's important is feeling strong. Right. So I found that as I got older, I could still see if I'm building muscle, but I could definitely feel if I haven't paid attention sure. to going heavy enough on something. So I don't know, I think just being a dad in my, on my mind is, am I useful? Yeah, okay, yeah. am I training to be strong and protect my family? Or, Josh Bryant talks about this a lot, you know, a criminal seeks an easy target. It's a gas station yeah, so if you look weak and unprepared. Yeah, you're the target. There's that famous interview of that guy who was like a pedophile and they interviewed him on 60 Minutes. Oh, yes. And he specifically said, they're like, well, what made you decide to target one person and not another? And if it was just an involved father, if it was just a present father, 
show up and look dangerous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Look, look like you care. And that's just it. Like, I think a lot of guys, I mean, people might say, oh, you, you sound arrogant. I'm, I'll, I don't give a yeah. fuck. Rule number one is I need to be able to protect my family. What I was going to say too, a lot of times, you know, guys might watch this and see your exploits. They might see my, you know, video of a 500 pound bench and all the stuff that you've done for 30 years and think like, well, that's not attainable for me. Like the bar, that's, those are our hobbies. Strength is our hobby. Yes. But the bar for capability and strength is so freaking low. Yeah. Yeah. Walk 10,000 steps a day, eat mainly whole food, get good sleep and weight train three days a week. Yeah. That's your bar. And you can do that. Anyone can do that. Dana White said it best that today is the easiest day to be a savage because oh, of yeah. how, how low the bar is now. Regardless of the yeah. age. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. My son uh, started a lawn care business. He just turned 16 a week ago, but he started last summer. It's crazy. It used to be yep. He was a baby. <laughs> now he's taller than me. So he's, he had like three lawns, then four, then like two, three weeks ago, he's like, I got 10 lawns. I said, how? He's like, I just knock on the door next of the neighbor of who I'm mowing the lawn. Yeah. I said, Ethan, nobody's knocking on doors. Nobody's shaking hands, looking yeah. people in the eyes. Cause initially he's like, I'm going to do door hangers. I go, e guy, that I shit's going to be, it's going to be in the garbage. I go, go, go knock on a door and say hi and offer to do offer to help. And so I thought it was interesting that he said, I just started knocking on doors. Simple, not easy, especially in that generation who communicates through phone. But now his business is, you know, basically yeah. doubled by just doing that yeah. one thing. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna carry. I like to do, I'm gonna do two different weights in each hand. Those are my favorites. That's called an offset carry and, uh, or different positions. Cause I like that it makes you strong in Awkward position. So I'm going to do a uh, rack and a suitcase. Right. So I'll grab the 62, get a good clean, and now I really feel it hit my body from an angle. I like it. You assholes are going to leave me with the 80s. Awesome. Yeah, I didn't really have an option here, Anthony. I'm sorry. <laughs> and then one while holding the other. Here, pull your elbow in like this, Joe. There you go. Yep, pull your elbow down and in a little bit. Yes, like a boxer. Well, it was funny. I made a video a couple years ago, uh, not hating on kettlebells, but wasn't in the most favor of them. And I'm going to be making a video soon about how I was wrong. Yeah, we're changing. Yeah. It's okay to change any ball. And, uh, I'll be interested to see that video. Yeah, I, ne well, I never really had an opinion. Well, now I'm in the market. I'm trying to. Cause, uh, we have a common friend and he had some 200 plus pound bells oh my God. and I was just amazed by playing with them, yeah. feeling them out and how I could utilize them. Swing. And I was like, you know what? Yeah, like I'll, I'll be the first to admit, like I've changed. Uh, so now I'm trying to find some, some big ass bells. I used to be one of those dorks back during my strongman days, like Smith machine is stupid. Leg presses yeah, yeah, are pointless, yeah. blah, blah. And I'm like, man, I love this. I yeah. love the leg. We, ha we are of the school. It depends. Right. Um, I did a, it's interesting, in the winter time, I tend to do a monthly challenge, like 100 reps a day. So I did 100 reps a day of swings. So in my garage, I got a 53 and a 70. So I started with four sets of 25 throughout the day. It became 34, 33, 33, then two sets of 50. I might do it with um, Hindu squats and push-ups. But just that 100 reps of something we normally don't do, and by doing those swings every day, so I feel like a little bit of waist shrinkage. Yeah, yeah. And then you just, the um, extra activity throughout the day inspired better behavior within me. Oh, you're gonna do these swings, eat better. So, okay, yeah. so there's something to that. People ask me all the time, is there any benefit for fasted versus fed cardio? Um, scientifically, no. Just get your cardio in whenever you can. Yep. I do think though that there is a psychological benefit because one, if you put it off and say, I'm gonna do my cardio when I get home, life can happen, you can get a flat tire, something will arise and you put it off. But number two, is a lot of times when we kind of binge eat or go off plan, we're not really that hungry. We're just kind of searching for that dopamine fix. Yes. And the thing is, whenever you get dopamine easily, it's fleeting and you'll often feel guilty. But when you get dopamine from doing hard things, it lasts. And so if you get up and you start your day with something hard, you feel accomplished. And then, you're, and then when they bring donuts into the office, you're like, I just did an hour of this this morning. I don't want to undo that. I want to stay on that train. So I think that there's certain physiologically, just do your cardio whenever you can. But psychologically, I do think there's a benefit to starting your day with something yes. hard. When I go to Vermont to work with my buddy Joe DeSena, it's always 5 a.m. 
right. climb the mountain, 5 a.m. do, and then all of a sudden, like even knowing I'm going there, I start training more, eating, yeah. to prepare, you know what's coming. Yeah, put something coming. on the calendar, yeah. do hard shit on the regular, you're going to have, you have a new house, you got a garage being built, you're going to be doing manual labor, oh, yeah. and it's going to actually, it feels good. People right. think that hard work is like some sort of punishment, it's actually empowering. I, dude, I'm addicted to it, you know, like I, that, that's a dopamine rush for me, is like the fact that I know I'm getting after it. I chase the work. Yeah. Well, you also talked yeah. earlier when we were first starting about like, no man should be that kind of dependent on someone else that like. Yeah. That was a quote that, yeah, Wellborn shared, shared with me. Well, I well, think the point is, I think most men would agree like, it's not motivating to go work hard for somebody else, but when you're working hard for you and your family, I'll yeah. do that all day. Yeah. We have chickens and a pig and you know, a bunch of stuff out in the back. I'll sweat all day long, fixing fences, doing stuff, because yeah. it's mine, it's my family. I'm, like, yeah. I'm investing in generations, but like, you know, going and doing, you know, I think there's that aspect. There's 100% to that. It's, it's empowering. Should we hit this again or a different tricep? Do you want to do dumbbell? Uh, triceps, kettlebell triceps. I mean, I do dumbbell triceps all the time. I like that thing. I would do it again. Yeah, so, so we did. Uh, Want to add a little weight to that? Yeah. yeah. I did like but, uh, a billion reps on it. Let's grab grab those three fives. So we'll add three fives to each side. So for an advanced lifter, I'm okay with triceps being heavy because I know they built their joints up. So I could go sets of five, sets of six to eight. I typically do train my accessories a little. Um, like triceps, I'll stay like the. Let's lift, you grab that side, Ant, I'll grab this side. Oh, who's up first, me? Oh, I went first, yep. I was gonna say, I thought Joey went first. I'll do a lot of band work also. I love All right, I'm good, got it. Come on. I do a little roll back. Rough. Good old Dave T. Tricep Rocker, West Side Style. That's right. Hell yeah. Rah. Hell yeah. Rah. Let's go. Rah. Nice. One more. Hey. Nice. Rah. Good. You guys got it? Good. We got Good. It. Good. Rah. Love it. So I remember reading in Arnold's encyclopedia that he was talking about doing a lot of sets of 20 for triceps. And I still remember that. Yeah. You're going this way, got it. You could go, uh, there you go, around it. Yes. So, good, good to go? You could do that that way too, though, with your hands inside of it. You could also grab it, neutral grip, hammer. My thought process is get strong from every angle, strong all around, because I think that applies to sport and life. And it builds confidence. You're like, oh, I could, I'll lift that thing up, I'll lift this up. No, I only lift heavy in the gym. I want to be strong all around. I can't remember the last time I wore a weightlifting belt. Even if I could deadlift 500, no belt. Not that a belt is bad, I think it's good, but my mentality is a little bit of what can I do without any help? Good? Got it. Yep, got it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. After, like, with strongman kind of taking some time off from competitions, I really haven't leveraged much supportive gear until I absolutely like need it. Yep. I typically wait till 85%. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Tell us when you got it. I got it. Good to go. Um, that's a great one. Wait till 85%. I'll see, we have two belts that Mark Bell gifted us at my high school. I'll watch kids belt up. Yeah. Two, I'm like, guys, build the real belt. Yeah, I mean, it's really just a tactile feedback for the brace. So it's like, if you can learn to do it naturally. They may not, they tend to not know how to use the belt. Right. That's right. I always tell people, I'm like, you realize the belt was made before they had racks. It was made, yeah. for, the, it was made for the belt clean. Br um, you know, you're driving into the belt. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, smooth bar. Yeah, it's just super smooth on the elbows, which I love. Right, Let's you focus when got you it, we got it. Triceps then. Um, I also like it for military press because you kind of clear the chin. Mm. So, uh, oh yeah, that is nice. Because yeah. a lot of them, especially with the neutral grip, how they have the, the bars, it's in your chin or your face. Your face. So That is a great point. I hadn't yeah. even thought about that. A lot I of Swiss. Right now. I was like, dude. Dude. That's why I don't like pressing with those bars because it has to be. Well, and I've actually stopped overhead pressing altogether except for on machines or dumbbells. Yeah. This shoulder will have to be replaced okay. one day. It's, I've separated the AC joint a couple of times. No, I can take it in and out of socket. Like, yeah. 
Now, it doesn't hurt when I do it. Yeah. It sucks in jiu-jitsu when it happens. But, like, I just I cannot press in this plane anymore. What about a landline press? Totally can do yeah. that. But I love overhead pressing. Um, you got to watch the volume. Man. That's right. I was an idiot and probably, I don't know, uh, right after my hospital incident, I think I was just feeling down and wanted to feel like I still yes. got it. Yes. Had an overhead press in a year and a half. Went in and, like, I did, I think I did... Don't record this. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, you don't have to release it. I did like four warm-up sets and immediately, and I got a single push press with 300. Yeah. Locked it out. Put it, my shoulder's been like clicking ever since. I'm like, Ugh. Do a ton of, uh, I love to do a lot of dead hangs. Accumulate dead hangs. Yes. Workout. See, I, I wanted them, but it hurts. It hurts so bad. Like, so what I started to do actually was I take the rings and I have a thick uh, band yeah. and I'll use the box to help assist a little yeah. bit. But, do you think uh, there's any value to dead hanging neutral grip versus I this? I think so, so like, <laughs> so, so like this, I feel like I could dead hang here for right. eternity. The second I'm here, this shoulder's screwed. That's how mine is. Mine's, mine's this, like, pull up. Is it turn. the same arm as your bicep tear? So right now, both, both my shoulders will need surgery at some point. I'm keeping it away as long as I can. What really uh, screwed my shoulder up was uh, arm wrestling. I, I uh, had a tour when I was arm wrestling. Arm wrestling is a lot of tour. I would say this, guys. All adult men should get a uh, Band Bell Rhino Flex bar or Earthquake bar. All. Okay. And uh, because you don't feel it in your joints. Number two, do a ton of uh, band pulling for that upper back rep it with the mini band. Dude, I know that. Yes, we know that. You know what else? Old school bodybuilding <laughs> lat stretches yeah. in between sets and also T-spine mobility. Let's get Joey rolling the big one. I love this dumbbell. Thick grip. Yep. I was gonna say, that's, uh, I'm, I'm just saturated. So this dumbbell, uh, I think it's two inches. I had my buddy Dean at Black Widow Training yeah, Gear make it. Two inch yep. And then I had old dumbbell plates from like Facebook Marketplace and my neighbors welded it. So thick, <laughs> the thick grip maybe limits how much weight you could use but the focus here is on integrating grip strength with your back. And so that has an immense carryover for combative, combat sports and life. What, uh, what's the weight on that bell there? This is only like 65, it's filled with sand, but the but grip. The grip is gnarly. The but grip see, I love the grip on that. I can press it. Here's the reason I love the grip on that is because it's more surface area Correct. contact. It's just easy to yeah. just. Yeah. You gotta have, uh, like if you're used to the thick grip stuff, it feels good. All right, Joey, let's get it. If these two bells, the one thing I like doing is uh, a lot of grip work, but what I'll do, kind of like Anthony said, the 85% rule with supportive gear. Most of my working upsets will all be without straps or anything like that. And then I'll throw on straps once I need to go heavy enough where my grip gives out, but super easy just to be able to get extra grip work in. And this is the non-support row, which is much harder than putting your hand on the rack. Most people make the mistake of twisting their back, like, 45 degree angle. Joe, How much is this? it's about like 110 ish, 115 ish. This is the benefit of having neighbors who weld. They welded it for me. So I could do five reps on this. That's what usually like my number. You know, if I can't get five, I start. You're a weak bitch. Yeah. I start. I start. Yeah. You quit. Then you got the, the, the voice. You're talking to yourself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yeah. Try to center your hand in that end so it doesn't fall out. There it is. Yep. There you go. But if my grip fails on it, I got to do more Captain a Crush grip or more Rolling Thunder. There you go. Nice. Good. Beautiful. Yeah. Good work. That's a beast. Yep. So I feel like I have a better grip on my left side than my right. I've yeah, always felt that way. One side stronger than the other. So I'm going to go, I'll go no chalk. Do you feel like the uh, captain of crush grippers help for this? Yes. Well, I still, I, I love the ones with the thumb. Correct. That little one. Yeah, I still fun. feel like this is one of the best grip tools out there. The captain of crush gripper. This one, the two and a half, I'm used to be able to close, but. My favorite of those is eccentrics. I'll, I'll squeeze it, lock it, yep. and I'll resist for the eccentric. Love it. I will do like reps, then I might do like three by three or five, four, three, two, one, do it twice. 
build up to something heavy. But as simple as the uh, Captain of Crush gripper tool is, to me, I found it to have a great carryover right away. Um, and I've used, like I have a Sornex uh, Pops Crush Grip. It's very good. I've used other grip machines that just don't right. do much. Okay, I love the integration, like I said. So I'm gonna do Joe's stuff. Actually, I'll, uh, I'll post, yeah, post up. Okay, so five, that was pretty good. Still living, still, still worthy of the yep. Come on. Daddy's still Come on. strong. Daddy's got it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Nothing help the sweat runs right there. Right there. I have a great story of like, when you mentioned I don't want to sweat in your face, when I was uh, joined my first gym, I just wanted to help and spot, and I saw a guy benching 315. Said, can I, said, do you need a spot? I think I was 14. He's like, yeah. So I was sweating. Gyms didn't have air conditioning back then. It was super rare. No gyms had air conditioning. So he's benching 315. I think on his third or fourth, I dropped sweat in his eye. And he was like, he was like, ah, ah. And all that ran through my mind is like, I'm going to fucking die. He's going to kill me. He gets five reps. Iraq, I said, good set. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I moved to another spot in the gym. I was like, this guy's going to kill me. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, we're going to hit some arm circuit, we were saying. We should do, we should curl here. So let me go over, like, the different grips here could be all. So you have hammer. You have this one. This is a tough one. Oh yeah, I, want, I gotta try this. Yeah. This one, but I don't like. Don't let your shoulders round. Shoulder back. Oh, yeah. So hammer, forearm support, or this one's the hardest because it slips. No support. So we got curls and. So this bad daddy right here. Yeah. It's hard for me, Brandon, another day at the office. But what's important here is keep your shoulders locked in. Don't let your shoulders get rounded. This is a commercial for T-Grip Bar. I love that bar. Joe is now, this is a wrestling All right. cutting weight move for Barbarian Brothers. Oh yeah, so you had them in here like this, is that you? Yeah, you can do all the grips. If you want, you know, as that meme says, how much protein? All of it. All of it. Yeah. Any grip you want. Nick Offerman. So, can be all the steak and eggs that you have. When Joe comes to me on the day of the contest, <laughs> he's like a child. <laughs> so it's not that hard for me to give him the wrong advice. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Let's go. Whew. Good. So, let's see. I'm the weakest guy in the group. I'm going to do three reps of each grip. I'll go from like the hardest grip with the least support to the one that's more like mechanically advantageous. So, right here. Oh, yeah. Ah. 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 So, it's kind of like a mechanical drop set. Yeah. There you go. Come on. So I'm using definitely some body, which we call that a power curl, but I'm fighting it on the way down. So now the support one could be here. I'm gonna go like a, a little bit of a wider grip. I want it to feel awkward now. Make it weird. Yeah. All right. See, he's got to one up us. You could also do a curl carry with it, an iso carry. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Show them. Everybody wants to change it up. In Let's bed. do uh, one. Like changing it up on the iron. You so Joe had an idea. Joe, tell them what your 10 minute finisher idea was. We're going to expedite it for filming, but give them the idea of what you had for a finisher. Yeah, basically, you know, we hit our strength. We did our accessories and 
where you maybe say you have 10, 15 minutes left to cash the session out, set the clock, 10 minutes, pick two or three, you know, bicep, tricep, shoulder, whatever you want, and literally just go for as many reps as you can in a circuit. And if you're not pumped by the end of that, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, so that's an easy tactic I'll use for myself, especially with the athletes where we got to put in their sports performance stuff, but they're also teenage boys and they want big uh, pythons and horseshoes. So I say have that at 10 minutes, run the rack, do some band push downs, hit some side delts, whatever you want to do. They leave pumped, they leave happy. I accomplish my goal, they accomplish theirs. And it's a good freaking day in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yesterday at the high school training freshman football, we did um, sled, carry, and then any arms. So because it's their second week, I was a little bit limited on, uh, or I limited their variation. So I said, you could hammer curl for 10, or you could do push downs for 10. Push downs should have been 10 to 15. We have like 50 kids for yeah. push downs. So I said, you do a sled down the turf or back, 60 feet. Then you're gonna carry it across the width of the basketball court, then you're gonna do arms. Yeah. And it doesn't sound scientific, but you know what we tell the new kids here when they're done? Sled, carry, curl. That's yeah. it. Three rounds, and it builds muscle. It builds conditioning and durability. That's something I feel is, the nerdy word is robust. I'm tired of that word. I'm tired of you nerds. <laughs> you, you sons of bitches. <laughs> I think the durability is lacking when I see athletes, like you said, getting hurt during scrimmages, getting hurt before games and matches begin. Why? You train for all show, you need to blend. Right. So you did biceps. I say I would like to get some quick uh, band work in for shoulders and shit. Yeah. You want to do another set here? Yeah. What do you got? Okay, what are you going to hit a different angle? I should hit a different yep. angle. I'm at the underground. You are, brother. I'm trying to think. You, this is harder on here. Yep, let's go, barbarian, brother. I say, make sure we get still photos. <laughs> I'm this just glistening. Great. Let's go. This is great, man. Let's go. Where are these jeans from? Target? No, yeah. Target better sponsor this man. People can buy this and I'll go for the jeans. <sighs> Excellent. <sighs> Boom. So your legs top. legs sold separately. That's right. Yeah. Legs sold separately. <laughs> Got to earn that shit. One thing too for strongman, I'm sure Anthony can agree with this is you'll see so many bicep injuries because a lot of people will neglect different angles, carries, isometric holds, you know, for any muscles around the elbow or, or, or bicep in general, and then they go to explosively pick up something heavy, and the tendons and ligaments just can't handle it. I, I do agree with this because what he just said happened to me. Yeah, I see. So <laughs> I got the scar right here to prove it. Uh, this uh, had a distal. No, it was actually an axle clean. You're not a pro yes. until you tear your biceps. That's right. That's right. Uh, and I was, it was a warm up. I was on my third rep of a 330 pound axle clean. I was getting ready for clash. Yeah. Uh, they were flying. Like it was not feeling heavy. And I just, and it, it yeah. just dropped. Yeah. yeah. That injury often does not happen because of what was done. It was leading up to that. Correct. So. The surgeon The surgeon said, he was like, dude, your tendon was so frayed. Right. It was a matter of time. I have like probably arm. micro tears in this left arm. And I'd say about, I'm 48 and a half. In my late 30s, I started only doing hook grip deadlifts. And because I think if you're deadlifting here, you got to learn how to extend the triceps. Or as you build mileage on the body, you got to switch here. Switch but my preference is... I'm going to hook grip, and if I can't hook sure. grip deadlift it, you know what? it I'm not hooking. doing it. it. It sucks hooking, but it only hurts for a second. It hurts in the beginning. That's why I say that, guys, you practice it during warm-ups to build up to it. So my next exercise is going to be I'll use the uh, globe dumbbells, and uh, I'll do like a multi-angle curl. I'll do different positions. And then, you know why I do that? That shit just matches my personality. I enjoy... Yeah, the variety. Plus, I've been training since '89. I I kind of thrive on the variety. So, to, oh, this is a fun one. I've grabbed two different weights. So, these are about. They might be 45, 47, so 40. They're both thick grips. So I'll do a couple reps and then I'll switch hands. So again, imperfect training. So I'll do maybe a hammer curl for a few reps. Let's say I did three. Then I will twist. I will cross body and I might hit like a 
double, and then I'll switch hands to kind of get the grip going. And same stuff. Or sometimes you just gotta learn to hold and fight to hold positions to get strong in all positions. But again, weights picked up from Marketplace and I had my buddy weld that yeah. together. Reminds me of stories I read, you know, Dave Draper training in the dungeon gym. Yes. He's like, we had 150 pound dumbbells wrapped in rubber bands. Oh, and he said workouts didn't start till you were superset, yeah. which is what we do. That's right. Bodybuilders who are the best in the world were superset. So certain things will always work. Joe, see if you could hold one and then do reps here. This is a great one. I learned it oh, like sucks. 15 plus years ago from uh, my buddy Joe Franco. He would do an ISO hold and reps in the other, and he was doing it a lot with baseball players. So it's interesting, you know, stuff that's, you know, the York Barbell Club of the 60s was doing isometric work, and now, thanks to Cal Dietz, he's bringing it back implementing it to sport performance. For me, it's life performance. How good are those thick grips? Awesome. Great. I, love those grips. I would go thick grip everything, but we have a lot of middle school kids here, so yeah. it's too They're much. They're limited by genetics yeah. at that point. Yeah. There you go. Come on. Oh, jeez. Nice. Come on, come on. Come on, Franco. <laughs> Today's a bastard. <laughs> my, my boy Samson will put in the B-roll from Pumping Iron. It's good. Love it. I love the circuits too, man. Like I pretty, I'd rather, as I'm older, push the pace more because it'll actually limit me from trying to go too heavy. Yeah, right. So that's safer for guys that have months. But what if you're you know, somebody in your mid-30s and just started lifting? You don't really have mileage on your body. So you're not going to feel the aches and pains, but I still believe in utilizing specialty bars. That's really wise. I need to do more of that. Yeah. Because even though I'm not competing anymore, I still always have that urge to push. And no matter what it is, if, I have, if I've, I'm good at sticking to my programs now, yep. but like if it's a set of eight, it's going to be the hardest, heaviest set of eight I ever hit in because my life. We right? Know, like, we know what it feels like to challenge ourselves and what it does for the mind. That's what I chase. I chase the feeling. That's where I know I'm fine with as I get older because the weights won't be the same. And I think people struggle with the weight needs to be the same as what yeah. you could once do versus for me, it's the stimulus of like the high I get of just pushing hard. Man, he said to me when I first started chatting with him online, 07, 08, he said, the reason why the older powerlifters get hurt is because they say, I'm trying to do what I used to do. He's like, yeah. well, you can't because now you're 45 or 55, you're not 25. Right. Um, although, yes, we do see pro athletes competing into their 40s, but they're living the there. most optimal, and the best a, recovery. There's also, yeah. there's also trade offs. Yeah. Yeah. There's lots of trade offs. 100%. Family life, how many of those guys are divorced? Yeah, right, right, right. Right, right. right. seriously. And I like, have this saying um, if training interferes with family, or interferes with sport, you need to adjust yeah. it. See, and that's one thing I've loved as I've gotten older, exactly like you said, I'm pushing myself in new ways yes. that involve my family. So my nine-year-old and my well, eight-year-old, we're tr training for a 5K together at the end of the summer. Yeah, I take them awesome. to the park and we're running awesome. together. I'm pushing them. And like, Greshi's like, Daddy, I, I feel like I'm gonna puke. I'm like, you don't get to stop yeah. until we get to that truck. Let's go, bud, I'm, I'm right here with you, you know? Uh, it it the makes you better. It's again what we said. It's, yeah, it keeps the family dynamic. You know, it's a vehicle for life. It's I, as easy to I would say this too, you're an expecting dad, Joe. The bet, when dads say, how do I get my kids more involved? So my first house had a gym, but my kids were babies. We moved here. My son was a year and a half. My daughter was two and a half. We had a high, our garage has high ceilings. So I put in a climbing rope. I had kettlebells and uh, that's all I had at first. Oh, gymnastic rings. So my kids would play in the front yard. I'd be doing farmer walks, sprints. I was doing plyos off my stairs. So my kids had this folding mat they would try to mimic the push-ups. Yeah, yeah. They were copying 
That's right. What and now? Yeah, look, you see, look, you I have know. not. I have not had to push my kids into training at all. Correct. They want yeah. to do it. They see me always checking my smartwatch. Like so now, one of the things for them is you know kids have screens. I'm not anti screens, but I don't want their face buried in a screen all day. So they have a max amount of screen time, but they have to get all their chores done first. And I got them these cheap little pedometers, little kids smartwatches, for like 22 bucks off yeah. of Amazon. Yeah. They're not allowed to have screen time until they hit 10,000 steps. I got up this morning. This morning I got up at around four. I did my 10K steps before I ever left the house. When I got home at 6.30, I'm making breakfast and Ellie comes out of her room. She's my oldest. And um, she's like, Dad, I'll be back in a little bit. I'm gonna hit the treadmill. And she's out there just walking, just getting her steps in, she's just 11. getting it done. She's 11. See, um, I think that men, when you start having a family, you need to lock down a time. Um, I'm very much like you. I need to get those things done before the dogs wanna get off the couch, before the kids are up. So when I'm home You're and home. I'm making breakfast, yes, I am where my feet are. And that might be, for some men, it might be your lunch break. Your lunch break may not be, it might be training and then a protein shake instead of going out with the guys at work, right? right. Um, or it might be, sometimes you gotta get it done when the family goes to bed. Yeah. And do I wanna not go to bed with my wife? No, but if I missed it, I know that I won't fall asleep properly because yeah. I didn't get that. And the kind upside of is, things. the upside too is, all these things are cyclical, like they're seasons of life. Yes. My kids didn't come to the gym with me when they were little, but they do now. They're at that age where they right. come. My son does jujitsu with yeah. me now. Uh, every Saturday, he's a little mat rat. He goes to his class. I go to, I go to my class. He sits in the corner and waits. Sunday morning, every Sunday morning. You've been to McMillan's gym in Lancaster? Okay, um, they're 24 hours. So every Sunday morning before church, my son and uh, my daughter come with me and we go to the gym. They just, right. they love it. And, uh, America needs more of this. I think the more. thing is too is just like you said, that's the season. The other season becomes when they're not in the house. And then what? How do you feel if you missed I'm out on all really the bad. opportunities right. to do that? Right? I got one. My daughter's got one more year in high school. Yeah. My son is out with his yeah. friends till eleven or ten thirty, yeah. and so it goes so fast right. because I feel like yesterday yeah. they were babies. Yeah. Um, and so you're right. Those times. They go, they go so fast is the ultimate understatement. Yeah. And so we do a lot of those things as a family. You know, there was a video by um, John uh, Delani. He has a podcast and the popular Instagram video was like, the travel sports are killing families. It can if you let it, but we always did it together. And then we blended in vacation yeah. time, together time. Uh, Mark Bell talks about it. He says, um, sometimes love is not quality time, it's just quantity time. There are the ups and downs sure. in that quantity, like what you're saying, and it's just such a great outlook and an understanding that you have, Joe. All right, listen, if you guys made it this far in the video, you're our true number one fans out there, but I will say there were a ton of golden nuggets throughout this, whether it was training, business, life, just a couple meatheads getting after it. I'm sure we'll put out the full video and then chop this up to some, some little golden tidbits for your digestibility, but, uh, <laughs> I had a blast. I'm super grateful to have Anthony here. Zach, been friends with Zach freaking since the Stone Age. So it's cool to see that finally I'm, you know, in a whole new stage of life and we're still kicking it. Uh, so make sure you guys obviously follow everybody in it. We'll have their descriptions, their links to follow through. Uh, but good group of dudes. Yes. Just, just pumped to be here, guys. Thank you, guys. Yes, awesome. thank you so much. We love you. Share it out. Destroy destroyers of dad bods. Yes, Destroy that's right. Destroy. Destroy. Yeah. You know what I'm that's right. <laughs>